Hello everyone, Victor Gichan is here. As you may know, Steve Jobs presented first Apple smartphone 15 years ago. But not many people remember that 11 years prior to that, Palm Computing presented the world's first smartphone, Palm Pilot 1000, which became an overnight sensation and led a growing market for portable computing devices. Welcome to the Contributors Channel, guys, where you can learn how to start and grow your business and how to make money. My today's guest is the co-founder of Palm Computer, which created the world's first smartphone, and we discuss on how to create consumer products that people really love. What are the main reasons why companies like Palm, Nokia, and BlackBerry lost their market to Apple? and what the entrepreneur should do to get back on track and win the race again. Please welcome my guest, co-founder and executive board member of Palm, Denis Milosevsky. Thank you, Victor. It's great to be here and thanks for having me. Hi, Dennis. Thanks for coming on the show. And uh, to start off, I would like to just share with you my feelings. When we met a couple of years ago and you showed me Palm phone, I was really impressed by its size and uh, as much as the people in this clip I want to show you right now. This is a smartphone. The iPhone in comparison, it's... <laughs> so tiny it looks so cool like it's just so sleek i love it i love i really do i would yeah. definitely get that now i have a couple of questions to you and if you don't mind how did you come up with the idea of creating a smartphone the size of a credit card yeah victor it's an interesting story i guess i should start with part of your introduction so palm uh is such a beloved brand and it's an innovators brand you know it was one of the first companies to put computing in the palm of your hand the new Palm is a different company from the original Palm. So we are the same Palm brand. However, we are a fresh take on innovation in the smartphone space. So how did we come up with the idea for a small device? So for those of you who haven't seen it yet, I have one right here. It's actually the size of a credit card. Uh, really tiny, weighs about two ounces. And uh, the idea actually came in two parts. I think the origination of the vision of the product actually came from a film. If you haven't seen the movie Her, H-E-R, it's actually a movie that takes place yes. in the future. And it's about the production uh, system, right? Yeah, and uh, you know, in, part of the storyline was that a man falls in love with his voice assistant. Now. That wasn't the vision for the product. What I actually pulled out of the movie was that he was actually using a device that was the size of a credit card. He was putting it in his front pocket. He would have it in places where it could go everywhere. And the idea of the device was that you did not use the screen. It wasn't about using the screen in heavy ways. It was more about leveraging your voice. So. The origination of the product really was around the evolution of voice technology. Could you perform the things that you usually do on your smartphone, but using your voice first? Starting a run, sending a message, let's say starting a call. Let's say you wanted to play your favorite playlist on Spotify. All of those things could be done without you actually taking a device out of your pocket. You could just use your voice for that. So that was one of the inspirations of getting people out of screens. Because as you know, you probably unlock your phone 150 times a day. Everybody's always glued to their screen. Uh, so our mission was, how do we get people re-engaged with the real world again? How do we get people to connect with people, be human? Like when we first met, we had a wonderful conversation. Uh, we actually had a chance to connect, learn about each other. We weren't buried in our phones that entire time. So we wanted to encourage that. The second part was that there was this interesting point in between wearable devices and smartphones. And uh, for instance, so if you left your home to go for a run, it was very difficult to bring a big phone with you. They're so heavy, you can't have them in your pocket, you end up holding them all the time. Also, smartwatches didn't allow you to do all the things you wanted to do on that run. Because when you're done with the run, what do you do? You take a selfie, 
you may want to go pay at a Starbucks, you may want to do certain things at that time, which a smartwatch couldn't do. So we also fit this interesting need where we lived in between smartphones and smartwatch. And really those two ideas coming together is what formed uh, the new Palm. I see, so it's something between smartwatch and the regular phone. Can Palm phone replace a regular smartphone? Can I just buy Palm phone and just use Palm phone without iPhone or Android phone? You can. We, we originally launched as a companion device. And what it means is that when you went into a Verizon store and you bought a new phone, if you bought an iPhone or if you bought a Galaxy phone, you could actually a attach a Palm to your phone number. So that was the first generation of the devices that we launched. So that meant that you could have these two devices and it was up to you to take one device. So for instance, people used to take the Palm running to the gym. They would use it as their weekend device. They would uh, use it as that lightweight device that they could take on a date night. It was an emergency device. So they did, there was a lot of creative uses for the companion phone. Shortly after, we launched the standalone version of the phone. And what it meant was that Palm could have its own phone number. So you weren't tied to another device. So it was like any other phone. And oh, when, it, when it became a standalone device, that opened up a whole new world of how people were using the product. We became a top selling kids device. We also became a device which fit interesting and unique needs where people could have a standalone connected phone number attached to the palm. That's amazing. And how long does the battery last? I can guess because it's a small size of the phone size of the credit card. The battery lasts a little bit less than regular phone, right? Yeah, well, it depends on how you use it. So for example, uh, the battery size, it is the size of a credit card. Beautiful, mm -hmm. thin. That only allows us to have about an 800 milliamp battery, which is a battery which is much smaller than what your standard phones come with. What we did, was we did something very special. So in the spirit of creating this live outside of the screen, we developed a software feature called Life Mode. Life Mode serves two purposes. One is that it allows you to eliminate distractions. So for example, when you're on the go, you don't want to get notifications every three seconds. You may not want to have your phone control your life. So what we did was we built this software so that when the screen was off, the phone was almost like in a smart airplane mode. I don't know if you're familiar but if you put your phone in airplane mode it's yeah, gonna no. last it's gonna last three or four days right. and the reason why is it, it turns off the antennas it puts the antennas to sleep so all of those radios whether it's uh, your wireless carrier who's trying to communicate with the device all of these background processes that are trying to hit the network so what we do is we put them to sleep so what that did is it would extend the life of the palm device so if you have your palm in life mode you would have your standard smartphone usage you would have usage one plus two days. But again, it depends on how you use the device. If you're turning the screen on often, you're going to drain the battery a lot faster than a typical phone because of its sheer size. But a lot of our customers use it for use cases where they are not using it all day. They're using it for cycling. For example, we were written up by Cycling Digest as uh, the reinvention of the bike computer. So people use it, let's say, for that two, two hour cycling uh, mode. They use it for running. They'll use it for the gym. They'll use it when they're going out in the evening. So they, they use it very efficiently that way. Yeah, I needed this phone when I used to go to the gym because my Samsung smartwatch, they don't support Audible and I like to listen to the audiobooks. Yeah, I could listen to Spotify, but I cannot listen to the books and this device would be solution, right? Well, yeah, well, one, one thing I want to show you is that we actually support full apps. So yeah, this I see. is the full version of, yep. of Spotify. You can have the full I... version of any app that you use uh, mm -hmm. from the Google Play Store. So this was the wonderful thing about Palm, which gave it an advantage over smartwatches, is smartwatches have apps which are, you know, sort of tailored for this tiny little one inch screen. Whereas with the Palm, even though the device was very small, you still had access to everything that you loved about your phone. Did you ever think to make a full size smartphone to co compete with Apple or Samsung? Or this is was exactly the idea where you found the niche where you will be better competitive position? Yeah, it's, you know, we are in a very unique niche and, and I think that's mm -hmm. important. So going in, we had, uh, you know, intention on serving customers that had unmet needs. We did not want to go and just create 
create another big phone. Uh, I think there's a long history of companies that try to compete against Apple and Samsung. Yeah. And uh, our even our, Microsoft fail. Our unique with position, their budget. Yeah, our unique position is introduce new kinds of experiences. You know, so uh, this wasn't really about saying yet here's another screen that's the same as these other screens. This is about unlocking new types of experiences that maybe you couldn't do with a phone that you've owned or a smartwatch. This is really clever. You guys brought on NBA star Stephen Curry as a strategic investor and advisor at Palm. How did you convince Stephen to work with you? I guess it's not easy to have a celebrity on board. Yeah, Stephen is wonderful. Uh, you know, we've worked with Stephen for years and years now. In our early stages, we're a Bay Area company. So we were founded in San Francisco. We're a Bay Area company. So the culture of the company is very Bay Area. You cannot get more Bay Area than Stephen Curry, right? So yeah, he is, sure. he's the face of not only Bay Area sports, but his philanthropy and everything that he does, that he's so involved in the community here that we were able to actually uh, get in touch with Stefan and we had a chance to meet Stefan and when we met him, he was blown away. There's a few factors that he loved about it. One of the things that he loved about it was our mission. So we have this mission, we call it Life Mode. Life Mode is about living outside of a screen, enjoying life in the real world. And so that really resonated with him. So he loved the idea that we were focusing on how do we better ourselves? How do we build better relationships with each other? And uh, how do we actually find a balance with technology? So. He was very interested in that. He had two young kids at the time. Now he has three. But he was also looking at where technology was going and what it was actually doing to us. So it, that really resonated with him. He loved the idea of how do we create a balance with technology so it doesn't dominate our lives. So that was one factor. The other factor was that he wanted to see us from the very beginning. He wanted to be a part of understanding how do you make something? How do you manufacture it? How do all the pieces come together, whether it's design and product? And he was very involved in that. So he was very hands-on. He actually helped us create one of our most popular accessories. We did a armband where you could actually wear the palm device on your arm. We would go to his gym. He would wear it. He would do his rope exercises. He would do all of his three-point practice. He was testing the accessory that he helped us design. So he loved being a part of that. He loved to see the creation process and he loved to see how it eventually made its way into customers' hands. Wow. So he is a real advisor. So he is so involved in this. This is amazing. Yeah. He's involved on the product side and the branding side. He's a, he's an investor in the company early on. He's family to us. And uh, so we, we love having him as a part of our family and uh, in, in the way that we can work with him. Yeah. That's cool that you guys have him on the, on the board. That's for sure helpful. What do you think? What the main reasons for the previous Palm computing, Nokia and BlackBerry, to lose the market to Apple because they were so strong. They were the first. And if I'm not mistaken, Apple Newton product failed. But finally, somehow, these leaders of the market lost the market to this company. What was the main reason? Yeah, it was, it was innovation. And innovation. I think the tipping point for Apple in the iPhone was uh, the introduction of the App Store and the fact that you had developed developers who are now building on your platform. And with that comes a lot of things. A big part of that is ecosystem, having the ability to, to build that ecosystem with those developers and have that reach. I, I think that's very crucial. So, so that was a huge part of that. And, and I think when you look at some of the incumbents, you look at the Blackberries and the old Palms and, and, and companies like that, where Apple stepped in was innovation, where you know they placed big bets. They didn't invent the touchscreen. They didn't invent these pieces, but it was the mastery of bringing the pieces together to create a new kind of product, a new kind of disruptive product. So I think that disruption is necessary in every industry. I, I think it's important for us to see how we can encourage those ecosystems because it's more than what you build. You know, the original iPhone they, there were prescribed apps, right? So they assigned, you have a browser, you have a phone app, you have an iP a music app, but it wasn't until that opened up and it allowed more developers to come in and start to build 
build experiences on top of that new platform. Yeah, definitely. I agree. And uh, right now it's a very important question to you. Please take it seriously. As far as I know, you also introduce very stylish and sophisticated wireless headsets, home pods, right? And I can tell you, even though I have several, probably three headsets, different price range, but when I saw the Palm Buds on your, especially Palm Buds Pro on your website, for some reason, I immediately wanted to have one. Like, why in the world, right? Can you share with our viewers how to create, how you guys create the consumer products that people really love just from the first glance? Yeah, building products that people love, I, I think is, is definitely a focus of my entire career. You know, I've been doing this a long time. I've had a chance to do it for companies like Google. I've had a chance to do it for companies like Samsung. And then of course, later on at Palm. And there's one magic thing that allows you to do. And this is where a lot of entrepreneurs, they they sort of focus in the wrong areas. And this is where, what could help them the most is you focus on problems. You don't focus on the solution. It's so easy to fall in love with your own product. It's so easy to fall in love with the solution. I think what matters most is focusing on a real world problem that people are having. I'll give you an example of this. You know, have a deep understanding of a daily routine. Who is your customer? What does their day look like? What things do they touch throughout the day? What are some problems are that they're specifically experiencing? You're solving for those specific problems. When you focus on that, then you become a much more powerful product creator because you're less focused on a product trying to find the solution and you're more focused on a, a need that people have and how you can be adopted into their everyday lifestyle. You know, one area that we even discovered a little late in the process was our customer base around kids. So when we originally launched, kids were not on our radar. We weren't thinking about that. You know, we we're a sleek device. It's a device that we sort of saw as a high-end device where you would adopt it for specific use cases. Then out of the blue, months into our launch, what we discovered is we were the most, most touched device in the Verizons. Verizon came to us and they said, guys, we have parents asking about your product. And it confused us initially. We said, well, parents, why would a parent be interested? And it was very specific. It was because they had 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds who had smartwatches. They had GPS watches. They could get you know basic tracking on that watch. But those kids were ready to graduate. Those kids who are now queens, 11, 12, 13, they needed to make phone calls. They needed to send text messages. Mom and dad, they needed to have better monitoring software on their tech devices. And they were coming to the Palm device and they were saying, we love this product because it's not another big screen that I'm giving to my child. They already have an iPad. <laughs> they already have these devices. They didn't want to give them another device where they could have TikTok or they didn't want to give them another gaming device. They said, we want this device to be an emergency device. When my child goes for a bike ride, when they go after school, we want to get a hold of them and we want to know they can get a hold of us. And then this was a whole new market that opened up for us. And it was because then we dug into the needs of that specific customer. We understood what they wanted to do, whether it was tracking them, whether it was communication. We also understood the costs associated with that because they went into a carrier store, adding another line was quite expensive. So they were adding another $35 line, $40 line just for an emergency device for 12 year olds. So what we did was we created our own data plans. We said, look, they need this device because they're only using a limited amount of data. So we went and created our own data plan. So every Palm that you bought, it actually came fully connected. We gave you 30 days of free service. We gave you data plans as low as $5 a month, which is unheard of in the industry. So what yeah, we- It's like smartwatch, $5, right? Same, same plan kind of. It's yeah, and what we, more functions. We, yeah, and what we did was we focused on the problems that specific uh, customer was having. And we were rewarded for that. You know, we were written up by Parents Magazine. We were written up by CNET as the phone to buy in 2020 because we focused on the customer. So 
Back to your original question is how do you build products that people love? You focus on the needs people have, the real needs that they have, and sometimes they can't tell you. You have to observe that customer set that you're uh, looking at and see what they're doing because they're doing something maybe entirely different than what they're saying and what they're telling you. So focus on the customer, all else follows, fall in love with problems, don't fall in love with products and solutions, but really understand who they are and what they need. That's really true. Yeah, so focus on the problems, not on solution. Cool. Okay, well, now I understand that Palm Buds Pro was designed for active sport, right? And you can work for 24 hours and in playback mode, right? So, wow, that's amazing. And I definitely go, gonna have one for me. So, guys, stay tuned because this product seems like worthwhile for a try. Okay, let's get back to our business stuff now. Uh, how do you see the global smartphone market in five to 10 years? And what uh, would be like, what is your strategy with within the next five to 10 years to really get uh, into this race and win this race? Yeah, so, you know, we never envisioned Palm specifically as a smartphone company. I would look at us more as a mobility company, which is why you see the Palm Buds Pro and you're seeing devices which complement the smartphone experience around connectivity. The launch of the Palm Buds Pro plays into our original mission, which is voice technology. And what we wanted to do is how how do we get voice on your body and that's through the ear so a really big emphasis for us was how do we start to build this ecosystem around connected voice experiences where you are pulling your phone out of your pocket less and less but if you're putting something in your ear it better be great right we have certain expectations so there's a few key focus areas that we wanted to hone in on around the the buds product one is we fell in love with bass <laughs> i i <laughs> We Everybody listen. like bass, right? <laughs> Everybody, you know, it, it has this visceral effect. And what I was finding is a lot of the buds and headphones on the market, they were starting to appeal to sort of a middle ground. You know, they were just okay treble, okay bass, but they didn't have the punch that I love. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to focus. So if you had these in your ear, we wanted you to feel the music. So uh, the investment we made on the technology side is a larger driver. And then we tune that audio driver to be punchy, you know, to have that sort of bass feeling. The other area we wanted to focus in on is if, you know, now so many people are working hybrid and remote, uh, we wanted to focus in on the noise cancellation technology. So there's six microphones in the bud, six, yeah. Wow. And so we use those microphones, our algorithms use those microphones to do environmental noise cancellation, active noise cancellation, and what it allows us to do is block background noise. So how many times are you on the street and you're on a call and you hear cars honking and the you know the road is swishing and all of these things so we wanted to focus in on how to build an amazing noise cancellation experience so so that was a big focus area of ours in the third area we want to focus in on was price so these are pro level but we wanted to get a price point under a hundred dollars so you'll find them wow. more. Yeah, so oh, how is it even possible? Yeah, well, we focused on the essentials. So we don't have every single bell and whistle. We focused on the audio quality and the, the punchiness of the bass. We focused in on the noise cancellation area. And we, we started to focus in on the things that mattered the most. So we may not have every single bell and whistle that may be out there. However, we feel that we have the ones that matter. You know, especially if you put headphones in, you want your music to sound great. You want your calls to sound great. So uh, th that was a big focus area of ours. And we, we were really aggressive on how we could get that price point. You know, we wanted to be able to price it at that $99 or less, even though they're pro level buds. Wow, because yeah, the competitive buds from Apple or something like 200 plus, it's like different price level. Right? Yeah, well, you're, you're paying a lot for brand. <laughs> right, right. I yeah. definitely want to try right now. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis, for sharing with our viewers your insights and life stories. Your product is look really amazing. I'm going to probably download right after the interview. I mean, the making order. I'm absolutely sure it's long lifetime innovations. You're absolutely right. And very sophisticated and convenient and definitely deserve to take a decent place in the regular life. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, Victor. It was great being here. And I hope this video was helpful. Leave a comment, like and share, subscribe and hit the bell below to be notified about my new videos. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy, stay wealthy, stay tuned.